Yeah, we got to talk. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy James 59. And there's a part of me, how do you say, I told you so, but in a good way, right? In my last video, right, Jim Stradamus 59, the greatest detective of all time, made that appearance. So what did I tell you? I said that we're going to be getting this DLC sooner rather than later. And when we looked at the sieves, I told you that the one that seemed like it was the strangest to me and probably not exactly in accordance with what the leaks suggested was the Hindustanis. And folks, that is exactly where we at are today. Welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm Jimmy James 59 and I'm going to break down the big announcement that we've had about the new DLC, right? The, the dynasties of India, right? I'm not the first person to probably break this down right now, but I'm going to give you that insightful analysis that you only get with the world's greatest investigator, right? And I'm on the case right here. Now, before I go ahead and get started, I just got to say, and you probably realize this, over the next months, we're going to be having a lot of content on this channel that has to do with this DLC. So I'm going to tell you up front, I'm going to tell you right now, go ahead. You want to subscribe to the channel, right? You want to be here because we're going to get into the lab and we're going to be figuring out how to play these new civilizations, what they're capable of, how they're affecting not only the 1v1 meta, but I actually think the team game meta could be really interestingly affected by these new civs. We're about to talk at them in a second. Hey, don't do it for me. Do it for the Hussars, people. All right, so let's get started. So here's the thing, what I want to show you first, right? This is the big ticket item. April 28, 2022. That's two weeks, right? That's 14 days. That's two weeks. So remember, in my last video, I said, why would you put the campaign files into the April preview patch? If this DLC weren't coming out soon, it didn't make any sense to me unless the DLC was going to come out soon. And it sounds like we have two weeks to wait on it, folks. So we are just jumping in, right? I'm sure that there's going to be a lot that's discussed within that two weeks. But folks, we'll be able to check out these civilizations, play with the civs, right? get into these campaigns. We'll be able to check that out in just a few weeks, right? So what I want to do here now, though, right? Because I know that the, the big the big ticket item here is thinking about these three new civilizations and then also the Hindustanis, right? So let's go ahead. We're going to check it out. We're going to start with the Bengalis. All right. So let's go ahead, right? Let's take a look at the Bengalis. I'm just going to I'm just going to blow this up a little bit so that y'all can see this text here and here's our description here right you recognize this image from the snapshot posted by the developers that we all piece together navigate the winding rivers and dense jungles of bengal as you build a thriving economy to fuel unstoppable armies of elephants the unique unit is going to be the ratha it's a chariot we'll talk about that in a second the ratha switches between melee and ranged attack modes right now this is really interesting this is something that i've been discussing in the game for quite a long time I think that the rumor was early on that this was the original idea for the samurai, right? And so it didn't wind up happening. Now it seems to be happening. So the Bengalis are going to focus on elephants, naval units, right? Bengali elephants, right? Let's just go ahead and spell these bonuses out here and really take a look at them. So elephants are going to receive 25% less bonus damage and are more resistant to conversion. Now, hey, Jim Stradamus, I tell you when I'm right. But I also got to tell you when I think that I'm wrong and or when I was demonstrated wrong, I am very surprised that this bonus has come to pass. I think it will when we get to the tech tree, it will make a little bit more sense when we look at it. But your elephants are going to be balling out there, right? They're going to be balling out the gym, son. So this is going to be pretty interesting because monks and the spear line 
Those are your two counters against elephants. And so we're going to see some interesting things going on. Okay. The second bonus here, right? Town center spawn in two villagers. That's also very interesting, right? You can imagine on a map like Arena. Whew, right? You get on that 5TC boom. Hit imp 10 vils. Dang, boy. Right? And not only that, but ships regenerate at 15 HP per minute. I actually kind of like this. A lot of times in naval fights, what you see is that you wind up having a lot of back and forth, right? A lot of ships getting involved, right? Having a little skirmish and then peacing out, right? Maybe when the numbers don't get quite right. And so there's some there's some downtime in naval warfare. And so being able to regenerate HP during that time and say not have to go home and have a villager repair a ship and also all your ships regenerating, that can enable your ships to do some interesting things. When we take a look at the tech tree here in a moment, we'll see just what their navy looks like. Now, the unique units, right? We have the Ratha, right? A unique chariot switches between melee and ranged attack. Going to be strong versus infantry. Weak to skirmishers and camel riders, right? Okay. So what does this tell you about the Ratha? If it's weak versus skirmishers, that, right? That means that it has to be classified here in the cavalry archer class. Right? And presumably also in the cavalry class, since it's gonna be weak to camel riders. Now there's gonna be a big question here, I think, what its pierce armor is gonna look like. And obviously, one of the things we don't know about any of these units is that we don't know what the statistics look like on them yet. Now another unique unit here is the armored elephant. I'll actually talk about that a bit more in the tech tree because I believe the armored elephant is something that is shared uniquely between all of these civilizations basically replaces the siege ram now getting into the unique techs right the pakes tech or the pikes tech allows rothas and elephant units to attack 20 percent faster now that's very interesting because think about the bulgarians with the conic the conic has actually a pretty slow attack speed until you research stirrups to increase the attack rate of your cavalry I wonder if the Rotha's ranged attack is going to be very slow. Slow. So this might actually not be an archer replacement. Might not have that hit and run capability, at least until you get this technology. Second is the Mahayana. Villagers taking 10% less population space. It's pretty interesting. It probably is going to enable you. Let's see if you have 100 villagers. Let's go down to 90. Probably get you 10 villagers back, right? I think that's the basic math. So this is a village that... I mean, it might wind up actually giving you, in some cases, more villagers, maybe a villager or two more than the goth bonus, where you get 10 vils, uh, 10 vils free, so, or rather 10 population space free, right? So, um, of course, if you are five town centers, you're going to be able to get 10 vils free once you hit Imperial Age, which is insane, right? And the team bonus is that trade units yield 10% food in addition to gold, this, the, so the question I have with this team bonus, right, as we, let's go ahead, right, jump into the tech tree right here. The question I have with this team bonus is whether you're getting 10% food and you're also getting the same amount of gold, or you're also, you're getting 10% food and 10% gold. It's not clear to me. I think it's the former, but it's not clear to me. Now, let's take a look at this tech tree, right? So again, we have all of our characteristics. There are attributes that are unique to our civilization on the on the left. We talked about those. Taking a look at the archery range here, what we can see, again, something we thought about in this patch, the elephant archer is going to be a shared regional unit, it appears, and uh, it's going to be made at the archery range. So this is really interesting. This gives you some definitely some Age of Empires 1 vibes. I actually quite like this. I think it's a really interesting thing in the game. But now the thing to think about is, because we don't know the stats of these units, are the stats of the Elephant Archer going to change substantially? I would think that they probably will. That would be my expectation here. Um, just given that the Elephant Archers, when they were from the old Indian Civ, just had a lot, a lot of HP, I'd be pretty surprised if a unit that can be made at archery ranges is nearly as tanky. So I think before we get some overreaction, we probably want to be careful to think and just remind ourselves we don't know the stats now taking a look here we do have arbalist uh no thumb ring but uh if you get the pikes tech right your elephant archers are going to be able to attack a little bit faster so that should offset missing thumb ring in terms of the firing rate and that is where the where thumb ring is usually really valuable though 
It'll be interesting to see what the accuracy of Elephant Archers is going to be from range, right? Some of Missing Thumb Ring will be a bit dependent on that. You are also getting Parthian Tactics, right? So that is something that's actually pretty worthwhile to note here. Now, if you scroll along, you do get Halbs and Champions. You get Squires and Arson, pretty good there. You're missing Supplies, so your Champions are going to be... Eh, champions are going to be a little weird, actually, right? Your Champions are going to be a little off, right? You're not going to be able to produce them quite as easily with your food economy, but... Uh, at least you do get their performance fully upgraded and the halbs. Well, we'll take a look and see if they're fully upgraded. We haven't got to the blacksmith yet. Taking a look, right? It's a really limited, so really limited tech tree at the stable. You do get light cavalry with bloodlines. We'll check the blacksmith upgrades in a sec. And you do get battle elephant and elite battle elephant. And you do get husbandry. So your light cav is at least fully upgraded, just missing Hussar. And taking a look at your siege workshop right as i mentioned siege rams are going to be replaced by this armored elephant this is going to be really really interesting to see uh is the armored elephant going to also be in the cavalry armor class that's one of the big questions here about this unit that we're going to have the siege workshop you're getting mangonel onager heavy scorpion you are getting some options you don't have bombard cannons so that could be a little bit of a weakness and it looks like you are missing the last infantry upgrade so those champions are not only going to be more expensive they're not going to be able to take as many shots and the same thing's true with your halberdier but it does look like your Ooh, we'll go back here right it does look like you are going to get bracer right so your arbolster are actually going to be pretty competitive you do get the last armor upgrade so these elephant archers actually are going to be very tanky because you're getting parthian tactics and you're getting all this armor right that's what the current elephant archer has with well the the what will be the old indians uh and so it's pretty interesting here and you do get all of your uh your cavalry upgrades so your light cavalry are going to have that six pierce armor and bloodline so your light cavalry will actually be pretty serviceable here in the late game now your docked tech tree here looks pretty good you're missing heavy demo ship but you get shipwright your ships are going to regenerate hp this is going to be a nice civ on water maps i think now if we take a look at the university again not bad at all right we have masonry we have architecture siege engineers is big right so those onagers are going to do well it's interesting to see i wonder if the elephants are going to be affected by siege engineers that's going to be a major question i would suspect that's going to be the case but it's kind of hard to be sure now we take a look like we have all of our tower technologies this is a pretty good university and here we have an image of our right, if we could just zoom in a little bit here right the ratha right there looking pretty looking pretty handsome there on that chariot it'll be interesting to see how the ratha performs and the major question that i think that we want to have for the ratha right now is that are you going to have to toggle the range versus melee attack because that could get very, very confusing. I actually talked about that idea in a separate context with the Step Lancer. And just imagine if you have a big batch of Rotha and you're up against units and you want some to turn the range attack on and some to be melee. It gets pretty difficult if you're trying to click on your units and only have the ones that are like right on the front line using their melee attack and the ones that are right in the back line only using their ranged attack. Uh, that could get pretty complicated, I think. Um, so you get masonry architects, you are missing hoardings, right? So still have pretty good castles for the most part though. Really nice monastery, only missing heresy. That's very important for your elephants. So your elephants, you know, are already going to be resistant to conversion anyways. So maybe missing heresy is not the biggest deal. And so, yeah, I don't know, something to think about. But so they still can get, in, kick, <coughs> blah. They still can get converted and pretty decent economy. Two man saw, crop rotation, only missing stone shaft mining. So anyways, so coming back here, what to think about the Bengalis at first blush. This should be a really interesting civ in a naval context. And to me, I think the two town centers spawning the two villagers, that sounds like it could be a really dominant economic bonus. I mean, you're getting two vills for free, but you're all but you're not getting the work time on the way up with say two extra villagers. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I think it could be a nice feudal age bonus and could be a really nice bonus i think more on closed maps is what i'm thinking right now um still probably a decent bonus on open maps because you get to castle age and you're basically getting four free villagers um you know two in feudal and two in hitting castle that's pretty sweet 
not gonna lie so you could do a lot with that uh could be a good sieve on arabia i like the fully upgraded light cab edition for some mobility um but i think the question here is going to be in terms of your power unit that you rely upon it seems like you're going to be really really elephant dependent but you have the bonuses to be able to sustain sustain it and depending on how good the rotha is that's going to be a major question so i think we do see some power units here but we just have no idea really how they're going to play out because it's really so new and i think this could be it's looking like it could be a bit of a slower civilization even with the addition of light cav because assuming that the elephant archer still costs food and gold and we actually don't know that then it may be difficult to go with a composition that say elephant archers and light cavalry or maybe if you wanted to go like double melee battle elephants light cavalry if that was something you wanted to do to just have some mobility in the field it gets pretty tricky so again this feels like a more closed map sieve to me feels like it could be with the shipper generation at least a competent military sieve on the water um not really any bonuses for docks or anything like that just yet so uh, but it kind of parallels i think to the berbers in a lot of ways in that sense but it's better than the berbers in that Berbers don't get ship right, right? That's the only tech they lack from the dock. But with Bengalis, you do. So you can play some late game Navy compositions and be churning out Navy in a way that it's just kind of hard to do with Berbers. So all in all, it should be a fun sieve to play on maps like Island, Nomad, Closed Maps. We'll see how they do on Arabia. That'll be really interesting to check out. All right. <laughs> Okay, so next up we have the Dravidians, right? Again, another beautiful map here. And, right, we're going to seize control of the lucrative Indian Ocean trade routes. And we have our unique units here. Okay, look, so it looks like we're going to have another naval civilization here. The Arumi Swordsman, a warrior wielding a, a scathing flexible sword. And the Thrissadai, a massive vessel that dominates the high seas. We have a focus on infantry and naval units, right? So let's just go ahead, right? Take a look at these civ bonuses. Receiving 200 wood when advancing to the next age. This, given that we have an infantry civ here, could make for some very, very sweet early rushes, right? You're basically getting the wood for an archery range and an archer just from the jump right that's pretty nice man that's pretty nice and plus if you know you're going to be getting that 200 wood you can go lower on villagers if you want or you can do a sort of a standard build but you know nowadays oftentimes you see people playing one range blacksmith fast fletching well boom you already have the 200 wood you can go ahead and put down two ranges easy day you can go ahead and make sure you always have the wood to get food out right or excuse me to get wood for farms this could be a really interesting early rush sieve. And hey, if you want to play something like Scouts, right? You got that 200 wood. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I know I mentioned it early on, right? Subscribe to the channel. I have a feeling we're going to be on this channel putting out some seriously wild build orders for the Dravidians, right? So, so just keep that in mind. So next up, we take a look. We have fishermen and fishing ships carrying 15... Uh, extra food this is not only just good on shore fish maps but this is actually really good on hybrid maps water maps that kind of thing uh this is this is not bad because your fishing ship's carrying more right you're going to be getting more in one chunk right they don't have to make as many trips so i like this bonus a lot i think barracks technology is costing minus 50 percent i tell you when i told you this is going to be a good men at arms rushing civilization boom that right there now your men at arms upgrade it's going to be 50% off, so that should be 50 food and 20 gold. I'm telling you, if you're having trouble affording double bid axe when you hit the next age with a sieve like Dravidians, right? You should probably, you could probably get a lot of your eco upgrades and have a really sweet economy going forward. Okay, the next civilization bonus, and folks, this is a really interesting one. Skirmishers and elephant archers attack 25% faster. So. <laughs> 
Skirmishers attacking 25% faster. What we're seeing with the Civ is we're seeing a lot of bonuses that affect fighting in the Feudal Age and beyond here. But Skirmishers attacking faster, this is very, very interesting. You're going to be able to incorporate Skirmishers into your Archers in Feudal Age very well. Skirmishers usually have a faster reload time. Attacking 25% faster is going to help a lot with that when coordinating those armies. And we're going to have to see the statistics in the tech tree, right? What kind of skirmishes they have. If they're missing something. I'm telling you, though, this is super interesting. Elephant archers attacking 25% faster. It's going to be really interesting to see here in a second if this civilization has thumb rank, right? And again, I'm going through this really. I took a brief look at this earlier today, but I'm really looking at this in detail for the first time. So you're discovering things as I'm discovering things. But honestly... This is really, to me, is setting up to be a strong early game civilization. Now, let's take a look at the unique units and technologies. Oh, and buildings, maybe. Well, not in this one. Arumi Swordsman, a Dravidian unique unit, can charge its attack. Okay, so this is sounding a bit like the Castillier. It's going to be strong versus buildings and infantry. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder... So remember, the Castillier's bonus does not affect buildings, but this is something like maybe the Arumi Swordsmen are going to have some nice anti-building potential, whether it's from the charged attack or maybe a bonus against buildings. We don't know, right? Should be effective against infantry, right? It makes some sense. Makes some sense. Uh, weak versus archers, as most infantry is. So this tells you something about the Arumi Swordsmen. Probably not going to be a high pierce armor infantry unit like something like the Sergeant or maybe even... Uh, a unit like the Obu. Take a look at the Armored Elephant. Again, so the Armored Elephant, right? It's going to replace the Siege Ram. And this, the Thrasadai is interesting here. A unique warship that fires multiple projectiles. Now, we looked at this unit earlier. And again, one of the things that I was wrong about is that... Or I was... At least my speculation turned out not to be correct, I would say. Because I wasn't totally sold on this. But I, was, I thought this might not be a warship. And if it was, it was going to have a more battering ram style to it but it sounds like it does fire projectiles even though the images don't really show that many uh that you know many projectiles to be fired so this is going to be interesting so um, i don't quite understand exactly what it's doing so far but we'll take a look at it in the tech tree and see when, actually when we'll be able to use it because i presume it's going to have to be uh you know castle age or beyond so we'll take a look at that now the unique technologies medical core elephant units regenerate 20 hp per minute hmm that could be good, though the thing with elephants is that it's kind of hard for elephants to disengage from fighting because they're so slow. So regenerating HP is usually a bonus that helps you a lot more between fights than it does during fights. So I don't think that this is going to be all that overpowered, actually. So this is, it'll be nice, right? It'll be nice if there's like a lull in the fighting, but I don't think, I'm not worried about this bonus. Woot Steel Infantry and Cavalry Attacks Ignore Armor. This is super interesting, actually. I mean, think about this, right? Vikings Chieftains does gives Infantry plus 5 attack against Cavalry, right? Okay. Well, a Cavalier or a Paladin with full upgrades, that's 5 melee armor. Woot Steel, right? It's like getting plus 5 attack. It's basically like getting Chieftains. Super interesting. And not only that, it benefits your cavalry. Again, there's a lot of questions about this civilization that we're going to have to look in their tech tree to really figure things out. Take a look at a team bonus. Docks provide plus five population room. Again, this should be a nice naval bonus. And so let's go ahead, take a look at the tech tree. Okay. So starting with the archers. So we're all, we are seeing Arbalist. Ooh, we are seeing Thumb Ring. And Elephant Archers attack 25% faster already. These elephant archers are going to be attacking very, very, very fast. That's something definitely to keep in mind with this civilization is your elephant archers are just going to be like, they're going to be a high DPS unit here getting a lot of damage on the field. Very interesting. And the Arbalist too getting thumb ring, right? We'll have to take a look at their blacksmith here in a second, see if they're fully upgraded and we'll go to that in a moment. Now, they're... Barracks is pretty good. They are classified as an infantry sieve. Looks like you're getting everything but eagle, eagle warriors, so no difficulty there. And remember this Woot Steel technology, your halberdiers, right, are going to be doing essentially extra damage in a lot of ways because they're going to be ignoring all those lovely blacksmith armor upgrades you get. So your halves, your champions are going to be very strong. 
Now, Scout and Light Cavalry. Ooh. This is like the worst stable, I think, in the game. For the civs that get stables, right? You get Battle Elephants and Light Cav, but no Knights, no Camels. No Elite Battle Elephant. No Bloodlines or Husbandry. Ugh. That's pretty gross. I mean, I guess you can ignore some armor. It'll be interesting to see how that affects things, actually. I have no idea what to expect about that. Um, it's looking like... Let's go ahead and scroll over to the blacksmith. You're not getting plate barding armor either. Ugh, so this is not even like Britain light cap level. This is bad, bad cavalry, folks. So this is, this is setting up to be not only like a pretty slow sieve that you're not going to want to play a lot of cavalry with. You do get Siege Onagers, but you're missing Siege Engineers, so that's going to be a bit of a struggle too. We'll talk. I'll talk about the Civ more, how I think it would be played once we get to the end of this, but pretty interesting. You're definitely seeing an Archer Infantry focus here and definitely wanting to shy away from Cavalry. Whew. Now, the Dock Tech Tree is beautiful. Everything is present. Ooh, here's something interesting. The Thersedi, only available in Imperial Age, right? So... This is interesting, right? You're not going to be able to spam this guy out in Castle Age. It makes you wonder just how strong it is. And you're going to want to definitely make sure with this civilization, right? That, Or let me say it this way. If you're playing against these guys, you might want to be thinking about how you can destroy their navy in Feudal Age and Castle Age. Because you might not want to let them get to the late game with a strong navy here. Now, if we look at the... If we look at the university, missing treadmill crane, okay. Missing siege engineers and architecture, pretty rough. But you do get bombard cannons, so it's not that it's not terrible. It's not terrible. And you get hoardings for the castle, so your castles aren't are still going to be still going to be pretty tanky. And you have the Arumi swordsman. Okay, this looks like this is the when we looked in the in the DLC shot. This is the swordsman with kind of a flail like sword here, kind of a, a whip sword or something. Um, Okay, it could be pretty interesting here. The monastery is pretty... Eh. No redemption. Do you get block printing? So you're not going to be able to convert enemy siege. Uh, definitely watch out for that when you, you go infantry and your opponent goes uh, mass scorpions against you. That's going to be pretty tricky. But, I don't know. It's okay. It's not the best, though. Missing both mining upgrades. That's definitely noticeable. And crop rotation. Uh, crop rotation is probably not the biggest deal. So, but missing gold shaft mining might have some effect because you might want to get that gold output. So, what do you think about this sieve then? Well, it's going to be a good sieve on water, it looks like. Uh, economically, your if you can get to late game on water with a Thresset Eye, that sounds good. Really nice. Where I really seem to think this civilization is going to shine here is in the early game. It sounds like you should have some, or at least it looks like, you should have some really good rushing potential. I think especially minute arms rushing with the wood, the barracks technologies. This is looking like it's going to be pretty good. Skirmishers are going to be very nice. And thinking about the power unit here, I mean, you're probably thinking with a, the civilization, a lot of like arb halb combination. I think where elephant archers fit in here is pretty interesting. I could see them as a high damage power unit. That's going to be interesting I, 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 to, to mix them into your army. The only thing you're missing on them is Parthian Tactics, so they should still be pretty tanky. Again, we don't know how much HP they're going to have. But honestly, this is this is an interesting early game Civ. On land, I feel like this civilization, depending on how good Elephant Archers are, I feel like this civilization could really run out of steam. And it's probably going to be maybe a little food dependent. Again, it depends on what the cost of elephant archers are. Are they still a food gold unit or are they going to move over and be a wood gold unit? That's very important, actually, going forward for what we find out. Because being wood gold enables you to start really mixing in lots of light cav. It'll definitely help you get in halberdier. Though halberdiers are so cheap, you can usually get them in either way. This is going to be a really interesting civilization uh, going forward and I'm telling you we're gonna have some fun build orders and that's a pretty slick Civ icon here too actually <laughs> all 
All right, next up we have the Gurjaras, and here we are riding our swift mounts across fertile fields of western India. The, the Gurjara uniqueness are the Srivamsha rider and the Chakram thrower. Ooh. All right, let's take a look, right? Civ bonus to start with two forge bushes. That's pretty nice, actually, right? You run into sheep, and then you don't actually, you could probably wait to seed some farms. Go ahead, get, take care of those forge bushes. Something like that's interesting. You can garrison mills with livestock to produce food. So that's really strange, really unique. I have no idea. That's just one we just got to test out to see how good it's going to be. That's one of those things that I think you have to decide early what you're going to do with it. I mean, maybe on some maps like Ghost Lake where you have a lot of sheep, you could eat some sheep and then garrison with the livestock. Um, but the problem there is if you start eating your sheep, then you're hurting how much food you can produce from the mills with that livestock. So I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, I like some interesting bonuses and it'll be, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, mounted units dealing 50% bonus damage. Let's see what kind of mounted units they have. It sounds like, it sounds like they have a lot of unique units here. You can garrison docks with fishing ships. Oh man, that'll be super helpful on high, especially hybrid maps, but really any water map. Unique unit, Chakram Thrower, okay? We talked about this unit during the last DLC video. Infantry unit with ranged melee attack, very, very cool. Strong versus infantry, okay, yep. Kind of like the kind of like a Gabedo or, uh, or a Throwing Axeman. Gonna be weak versus archers. So again, this unit may be, uh, you might expect this to be something of a glass cannon, right? It's kind of profiling as a unit that should have not very much HP. Now the Shrivamsha Rider, is a light cavalry unit that can dodge projectiles. Somebody cue the MBL auto everything uh, memes here. Strong versus archers, weak versus pikemen and camel riders. So one of the things I told you about this unit and why I didn't expect it to be a strong against archers perhaps is because given that it seemed like a light cavalry unit, we were right about that by the way, it would probably not have much pierce armor, but apparently the way it gets around it is that it dodges projectiles. Um, I have no idea how it's going to do that, right? If it's going to go Matrix Neo style or something, we'll see. Camel Scout. Can you start off with a Camel Scout? Let's look. You start the game with a Camel Scout. Ooh, very interesting. Very interesting. And you get the Armored Elephant. Okay, let's look at the, the unique text. Kasatras. Military units cost minus 25% food. All right, put a pin in that. We're going to have to come back in that when we look at their tech tree, see how that turns out. Frontier guards giving camels and elephant archers plus four melee armor. This could be very, very sweet for the camel riders, especially if you're fighting probably against swordsman line units, right? Uh, because pike units are probably doing too much bonus damage. Plus four melee armor probably helps a little bit, but not enough. Camel Riders, right? Fighting against champions or something. Taking the damage of a champion and reducing it by four is pretty massive. You're basically stripping away all of its blacksmith upgrades. And the team bonus is that camel and elephant units are created 25% faster. So you're going to want to have this guy on your team if you're playing with other Indian civs, right? This is the best friend of a lot of these other uh, Indian subcontinent civs. Let's take a look at the tech tree here. So... Looking at the tech tree, no arbalist. We got crossbows, thumb ring. All right, okay. Kind of a middling archery range at this point. Kind of middling here. Thumb ring should be good for the elephant archers though. Oh, our barracks is atrocious and oh my goodness, look at this. No pikemen. Move over Turks, you got another sieve hanging out with you. It doesn't have pikemen. Turks are still the only civ that doesn't have elite skirmisher, but hey, whatever. Um, spearmen, and not only that, but no squires. These guys are going to be slow. That's tricky. Okay. Take a look at the stable now. Hussars. Ooh. Hussars, Shravamsha, the Shravamsha rider, and heavy camels. So this really is, right? This civilization is classified as a cavalry and camel civilization. And you do get bloodlines. You do get husbandry. Let's take a look at the blacksmith here. Ooh, you get all your armor upgrades. You don't 
Nokia Blast Furnace. So your Hussars are going to be really cheap once you get that Castle Age tech. Military units cost minus 25% food, and you get supplies? I mean, it's good that your infantry sucks, but man, you could spam some cheap two-handed swordsmen that at least get all the armor upgrades. Maybe don't sleep on that, actually. If you're up against... That's actually... You know what? I actually kind of like that because I feel like super cheap two-handed swordsmen might not be a bad play against eagles, though you're still going to be paying the full gold cost. So that is something to think about. Now, these Hussars are going to be like... You're not going to have Blast Furnace, but they're going to be very, very cheap. What is that? Is that like 60? 60 food Hussars, right? Ooh, not bad. Really, the, the the key thing is here is this Elite Shravamsha Rider. Is this a light cavalry unit in line kind of with like the Step Lancer? Which is technically classified as a light cavalry unit, but it does have better performance than the actual light cav. This really remains to be seen. The Heavy Camel Riders are going to be pretty good here, it looks like. The extra melee armor, and they do get all of their cavalry upgrades. Your heavy, your heavy camel riders are going to be pretty strong in melee fighting here. Now, if we go over to the siege workshop, we have bombard cannons, but we don't have siege engineers. So it's going to be a pretty mediocre siege workshop, I think. And yeah, this is definitely a cavalry camel civilization here. The dock tech tree is, it's nice to get shipwright, galleon, also have bracer, but you're missing fast fires. It's an okay dock tech tree, not the best, not the worst. Plus also the fact that you're making camels and elephants faster, that's also pretty huge. The shotgun thrower, right, that's going to be made at the castle, not bad. Yeah, because it's worth knowing, right, that this Shravamsha rider is made at the stable, so it's not bad. You can crank, start cranking those guys out in Castle Age. Decent Monastery. They're missing block printing. Missing Faith, but, you know, that's so expensive. Probably doesn't get researched as much as you'd think. These castles, by the way, are going to be very strong with masonry and architecture and hoardings. Very strong castles. If we take a look as well at the economy. Missing Two-Man Saw. Hmm... Missing two mantle actually is kind of a, uh, it's a little bit of a bummer because, you know, once you research it, it takes effect immediately, but the late game economy technologies are probably, you're not getting the most value out of them as you do with the early game ones. So I'm not terribly worried about it, but it is worth knowing you're probably making a lot of food with this civilization anyways. You can go hand cannons, I suppose. Okay, so let's take a look. This mounted unit still 50% bonus damage. Okay, so we looked at that. And our mounted units here, we don't know what the bonus damage of the Shravamsa Rider is. We know your heavy camels are going to be doing even more bonus damage. Oh my goodness. And whatever this camel scout does is going to be doing extra either. That's really interesting. Now, something to note here, no battle elephants for this civilization. So remember the idea of battle units, or battle units, battle elephants as a shared regional unit? Right? Our boys, the Gajaras, are not going to get them. They're not going to get them. Do we have any other mounted units? Well, our Elephant Archer does 50% bonus damage. Hmm. The question is, is it going to do any bonus damage, though? Right? I guess that kind of remains to be seen. So what we can probably take away from that is that camels are going to be sick. Hussars, presumably, right? Your light cavalry should take out monks a little bit faster. And then whatever the unique unit does. This is an interesting civilization. I think that there's a lot of potential here for a pocket sieve kind of role. I do think with elite elephants, we don't really know how they're going to function on the flank yet because I don't know. It's just hard to say, right? If is an elephant archer sieve because you can make it from the archery range, is that going to be a viable flank civilization, right? If you want to play maybe as a defensive flank sieve, I have no idea. So, all in all, I think you can definitely see this Civ on Arabia. It, it, this is the Civ that probably right now is the hardest to predict because we don't really know what the effect of this whole livestock mill thing is going to be. The fact that camel and elephant units are created faster, 
This could see Camel Scout openings could be really, really strong. Again, this is gonna just gonna be some interesting build orders for this Civ too for the early game. I'm telling you guys. So yeah, this is pretty interesting. Um, I, I, it's hard to predict though, and so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of keep it I'm gonna keep it close lipped right there because I actually don't know how this Civ's gonna turn out, but I think it's gonna be very fun to figure out how. Okay, just to go through a little bit through the campaigns before we get to the Hindustanis, right? We have some new campaigns. Uh, Babur here, Rajendra, right? Devapala, some new achievements. Okay, right? Well, we covered the campaigns, guys. Um, if you're really interested in campaigns, I gotta say, uh, you know, we don't cover a lot of the campaigns on this channel. Uh, if you're actually interested in me covering some of the campaigns, I would be interested in that. Nobody's ever mentioned it as something, but I know campaigns are a, a, an important part of the game, and I don't want to give, I don't want to treat them as like there's something less than either. Uh, I just don't know anything about the campaigns, and pretty much every campaign I would be playing for the first time if I started doing content on that. So if you're interested in understanding, seeing somebody struggle through the campaigns on the first time, well, I'm probably your guy. <laughs> Okay, right, so in the video I did before this looking at the leaks, I told you guys, I said the Hindustanis, first of all, the leaks didn't make any changes to them except for classifying them somehow as a camel and cav archer sieve and including a picture to their a unique unit that wasn't in the description. Nothing about this made sense to me. It was something that made me doubt the authenticity of the leaks and while i think with the three other sieves the leaks have turned out to be very very accurate so far with hindustanis they've been nowhere close to being accurate so we were definitely we definitely got that right so we're gonna go ahead take a look at the civilization right we can see camelry and gunpowder again sticking with the theme from the original and notice this the sieve is available to play without purchase of dynasties of india so when the game updates, presumably, right, on uh, on April 28th, presumably you should be able to play the civilization and unless we're going to have to say goodbye to the old Indians, right? So we'll see you. Well, we won't see you out there on the ladder. We'll see you in our memories that we fondly have of you, right? You can check them out in some of my build orders that I've done with the Indian civilization if you want to remember them fondly. Okay. Let's get into the Civ bonuses because there are a lot of changes to the Hindustanis. The villager dis the villager bonus is going to stay the same. Here's a huge new one. Camel riders attack 25% faster. I actually really like this bonus. It helps establish your camels, your, your identity rather, as a camel civilization and having really good ones. And it also means because camels are units, because they don't do that much base attack, they kind of struggle against non-cavalry units. So fighting against champions, killing villagers, I think, is a real problem for them. Attacking faster is going to help make up for that. So I like that change. It's going to help the camels, I think, be more of a mainline unit. Now, this is interesting. Gunpowder units are plus one melee, plus one pierce armor. I think I mentioned this before in a video that I felt like Shatagni just doesn't it gives you a little bit of range but it doesn't give you a ton right i think if you want to check out my best gunpowder units tier list video i think that's where i i do bring this up you know plus one range is good but how dominant is it's a question having though this melee armor pierce armor is really important because if you've watched my videos you know my old saying that archers fight on the margins having an extra pierce armor is going to be really really helpful if you're fighting against other ranged units and to tank more uh, more uh, javelin fire from skirmishers. All right, the other sub bonus is that you can build the caravan sorry in the Imperial Age. Now here's something really important to note here about the sub bonuses. The last big change to what is now going to be known as the Hindustanis got rid of plate barding armor but gave them extra pierce armor and castle and Imperial Age respectively. That's absent. So we're going to have to take a look in the tech tree and see if the Hindustanis have all of their blacksmith upgrades. 
Now, in terms of unique units, the Ghulam is that unique infantry unit with the spear. Can go through multiple targets. Okay, very, very interesting. Strong versus archers, weak versus cavalry. So this is kind of like a scorpion mechanic, it sounds like, but as an infantry unit. I like the idea of this. The fact that it's going to be strong versus archers and it's an infantry unit to me says two things. One, it should be fast because it's going to be able or it's going to need to be able to close in on archers. The second thing here is that it's probably going to need to have high base pierce armor or some kind of bonus resistance to units that are maybe in an archer class. Maybe even a bonus damage against archers. So this could be like something a little bit like a Huskarl. I think that Indians as a, or Hindustanis now as a civilization are kind of weak to Arbalus anyways, because now, right, your camels in Castle Age look like they're going to be, in terms of their durability, generic, but they are going to have the faster attack. So that is going to help their camels definitely in Castle Age. But yeah, this is, this is super interesting. The, or the, Original version of this Civ, right, when they were the Indians, missed the last infantry armor upgrade. So we're going to have to see with the Ghulam what this looks like once we get in the tech tree. Keeping the Imperial Camel Rider, very solid. Uh, we don't know if maybe the HP is going to be changed or the Pierce Armor could be changed to the Imperial Camel Rider. I've said this about Indians before. I think the Imperial Camel Rider should have an extra base Pierce Armor. Though, now that they attack 25% faster... Not sure that I still agree with that um, because that's already going to be a unit that can dish out damage in a, in, in a heartbeat very, very quickly. Now, we have a unique building, right? An economic building, hills, and increases speed of trade carts. Ooh, that's interesting. I like that too. So, this is going to be a nice late game civilization, I think, here, right? I mean, you I mean, this civ always kind of has been in some ways, though, you know, Late game, usually the way this Civ has played out, it's been very much a Cav Archer Civ, and we haven't seen anything about Cav Archers yet, so we're going to have to reserve some uh, some discussion on that. We'll, we'll take a look at the tech tree here in a sec. You need to take this Grand Trunk Road. Okay, this replaces the Sultan's technology, and it's basically the same thing. Gold income's going to be faster. Shatagni is now giving Hand Cannoneers plus two range. Ooh. So your hand cannons are going to have really nice range now. Hand cannons are still pretty inaccurate, but they do a lot of damage in bunches. This is super interesting, and they're going to be more tanky. So I like this change. They are really helping the Hindustanis have that identity as a gunpowder sieve, and that's pretty cool. The team bonus now is camel and light cav units are doing plus two attack against buildings. That's pretty cool too, actually, right? So your camels in the old sieve did plus four attack against buildings, but since they're attacking faster now, getting that plus two attack probably evens out, I would like to think. In fact, your light cavalry is going to be good against buildings. This isn't a lot, but you can imagine maybe a sieve, like, can you imagine a Faremba light cav? Uh, I mean, that's going to be seven plus nine damage. That's 16. You're doing a lot of damage with a Faremba Light Cav against uh, if you have the Hindustanis as a teammate. So that could be very, very interesting. This, because it's affecting Camels and Light Cav, you're probably going to want to pair it with other Camel Civs, of course. But then again, especially in 2v2s, late game Light Cavalry raids can be pretty important, even in team games. Um, this is going to be an interesting Civ. So let's take a look at the tech tree now. Okay, so what do we see? Oh, we see some really... So, oh... Okay, so one of the things that's the same, you don't get Arbalist, but take a look at this. Your heavy cavalry archers. Take a look at actually two things here. Hindustanis, right? The original elephant archer Civ are not going to have elephant archers. That's a major loss. But not only that, you're missing Parthian tactics, right? Hindustanis, right? Old Indians was one of the few Civs that had fully upgraded heavy cavalry archers. This, I think, is a major loss to the Civ, just from the jump, right? And you can mark this video as the start of the campaign to make sure that the Hindustanis have Parthian tactics. I'm going to tell you why. Because now that your camels, in terms of their durability, are generic in Castle Age, and you're not getting any bonuses, it looks like, unless the Imperial Camel Rider is going to be getting something, which I feel like is really doubtful. 
the civilization is setting up as being pretty weak to archers at this point. Just looking at the profile here, uh, this is looking a bit like a struggle and heavy cavalry archers, right? Were a really nice alternative. It's a unit that you could mass in Castle Age and still feel good about making an Imperial Age and missing Parthian tactics, right? Because camels are defeated really, really terribly by halberdiers. The fact that you had Parthian tactics was really nice because you're doing plus four damage to the spear line. That's a pretty big jump in your DPS against spear units. And you could kind of thin out the ranks of halberdiers a bit more. So I think for I think for any Civ, losing Parthian tactics is going to be a downgrade. I think for Hindustanis, I think it's a major downgrade to their cavalry archers just because you are going to lack the knife line. Now, Halberdier's champions, this all looks similar as before. Hussars, right? Camels, Imperial camels, all looks the same as before. Okay, so our major question's been answered here. Plate Barding Armor is back. That's very, very good for their Hussars especially. I don't think it's as big for their camel. It's basically their, their, their camel riders. You're just getting back the one melee armor and you're, you're dealing more bonus damage anyways. So it'll help you maybe against, you know, if you have to fight swordsmen or something like that, but that's already not a, a situation you want to be in. Though if you're attacking faster, it'll probably help you with that. Where this really is going to help is your Hussars, right? You are going to have the extra melee armor and because if you're up against other Hussars, that's actually kind of important because Hussars aren't doing a lot of damage anyways. So now your Hussars are back to being fully upgraded. Uh, looks like you're going to get Bombard Cannons. Siege Engineers is still there. No architecture. Still a pretty weak Navy. No Bombard Towers. We have our Gulam. I think this is pretty slick. This is a pretty slick looking unit, actually. Like, yeah, that's pretty. I wonder if it's going to have a Huskarl like potential. I don't need to zoom in that much. I, I see I see a Huskarl type unit here. Again, this is really going to be your anti archer unit, but. Well, let me talk about that. We'll get into the Civ a bit more. Uh, missing Atonement and Heresy, right? It's not a bad. Getting Redemption and Block Printing is very important. And in terms of your economy, you're getting everything in the late game but crop rotation, so it's a pretty decent economy. So, I really see I really see Hindustanis as a Civ right now. Uh, so, we have some major changes, right? As we predicted. The big surprise to me is losing Parthian Tactics. I actually think, right? And you can... I'm making... I'm making my great prediction, I think when this Civ comes out, I think Parthian Tactics is going to be back in it. When the Lithuanians were previewed originally, they had Parthian Tactics. And then when they came out, they did not have it. And it would not surprise me if that's something... Because again, one of the things to think about with these DLCs is almost every DLC we've had, whatever the, the tease has been, right, that we've gotten, has not been the same once it's launched. I would be surprised, even though I know we're only two weeks away, it wouldn't, if there was going to be any change to what we've seen so far, it wouldn't surprise me to see Hindustanis actually have Parthian tactics. Just because being able to go heavy cavalry archer with the Civ has always been, I think, a part of its identity for a long time, especially given that the civilization is losing the elephant archer. I think that if you, they had the elephant archer, you might think that, well, Thumb Ring, Parthian Tactics, maybe that's a little overpowered. Um, and to have all the armor upgrades too. Like, I, I can understand that. I really could. But to not even have the Elephant Archer at all. And let's see, do they have Battle Elephants? I don't think they do. All right, so the Battle Elephant's not a part of the Civ either. So that's something that's really worth knowing. So... Yeah, I just, I don't actually, I really don't understand losing Parthian Tactics. This is probably a way that the developers are thinking we're going to get people to play hand cannons in Imperial Age instead of going for heavy cavalry archers. But the problem with that, though, from a play perspective is that you do have to, if you're playing cav archers, right, because you're up against, say, an Arbalist Civ, right, then you are gonna really struggle against like arb halb compositions compositions and it's really nice to be able to have a sieve that is a really good heavy cavalry archer and hussar combination the hussars now are fully upgraded so that's nice but 
to be able to stand and deliver against Arbalos is really important because the thing you got to remember about heavy cavalry archers is that you are, first of all, they're very expensive. They take a ton of upgrades to really get the juice out of them, but they have less range than Arbalest. So it's pretty easy for Arbalest to get in range. And so you're often still taking a decent amount of damage in those late game Imperial fights. And boy, th th this missing Parthian tactics is something that really rubs me the wrong way here. And so I think, uh, I would I would hope that by the time we get to the DLC coming out, that that it's coming out, it's gonna be back in the tech tree. But but we'll see. Um, and with that though, right, the DLC as we've said, we're at the end here. The DLC is only right. We just scroll down, right, guys. Gonna sell out here for the devs here. This definitely is right. You know, um, you know. Obviously, I would never tell anybody to buy anything just because you know i would never tell anybody what to do with their money that being said i will say that the new dlc sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun it sounds like it's going to have a lot of interesting new mechanics and concepts and ideas and honestly the thing that really i think the thing to me that's really exciting about this dlc from a play aspect is that is that i really wonder how it's going to affect the team game meta um, I think team game meta has been pretty is been kind of stale for a bit, but I really wonder what the potential is going to be of elephant archers. I really want to wonder what the potential of these, some of these camel sieves that have a lot of bonuses. I wonder how they're going to fare in team games. Dravidians sound like they're going to be a nice flank sieve. I think this is going to be really interesting. I think that this also probably shakes up uh, maps like Nomad probably some extra dimensions with uh you know probably bengalis uh, especially on closed maps like arena maybe even the dravidians too actually since it's a slower paced sieve um though i think the early russian potential is so good but hey you can take that you know you can take the plus 200 that you get right right imagine you're on arena you do a fast castle you have 400 wood that could be very strong on a closed map like arena so i'm not gonna lie guys i'm pumped right like i mentioned from the outset we're gonna have so much content on this channel you are not going to want to miss it because uh, we're gonna see if we can take these sieves figure them out right and we're gonna work our way to the top so that being said right i'll check you guys out there on the ladder i'm jimmy james 59 peace